Hey, I'm up here. What an intro. I seem like such a queer. Anyway, it's the queer up here. Okay, we're going to stop with that. What's going on, guys? Ben Glenn here. Come back at you with another video for another Madden NFL 18 fantasy style rebuild. Today, we have the Buffalo Bills. And I have so many Bills fans that are subscribed to my channel. And I hate like 78% of them. I've done the math. There are a lot of you. I've counted every one of you. I'm like, hate, don't hate as much, neutral, he's all right, hate. It, it's 78%. I hate 78% of you. Some of you are so annoying. Oh, Bills are the best team in the like. There's None of them know. They think the Bills are so good. Here's the thing, though. They're not. They're okay. I don't know how. They don't really have that good of a team. They don't really have great players. But they've been winning a little bit. The Bills are kind of weird because, like, what do you do with Tyrod Taylor? You got a lot of draft picks. They have a pretty good future. We're in a position where we can make this Bills team pretty stacked over the course of a few years. So we're going to do just that. I'm excited. Are you? Three rebuilds in a row daily. Leave a like for that. I don't know. Subscribe if you're new. Follow me on Twitter. Tell me who I should do next. Let's get after it. You know, I forgot the Bills went out and got Nate Peterman. That's an interesting development. Also, they drafted Zay Jones in the second round. That's a fun thing. He should be pretty good as a rookie, hopefully, in this rebuild for us. Offensive line is poor. Cordy Glenn is, you know, I thought he was going to, he's decent. He's not really that good. Reggie and Godito is, of course, a god. However, he is 34 years old. Need to get rid of him. Eric Wood is old. Vladimir Dukas is old. He hasn't even been somewhat decent since he was on the Jets. Jordan Mills is kind of like a slippery slope. Like, he's young and he could develop, but he's not going to. Charles Clay is kind of in a similar boat where he's like 28, 29. Yeah, he's 28. I don't really think he's ever going to be anything crazy for development purposes in the game. Remember, everything I say is in the game. I'll make, I'll make statements about them in real life, but... You know, nothing crazy. Jordan Poyer has actually surprised me. He's played really well this year. So is Micah Hyde. Micah Hyde has played incredibly well. They got uh, Shamarco Thomas. Lorenzo Alexander is, like, amazing. He's kind of like Cameron Wake, honestly, if I had to compare him to one player. Like, nothing and then amazing. Granted, Cam Wake played in the CFL and dominated, but he was on the practice squad for the Giants and got cut. Like, he couldn't make any team, and then he comes... Uh, through the CFL, dominates, go to the Dolphins, dominates. Linebacking situation's kind of weird. They traded Reggie Ragland fairly recently. Preston Brown's cool. I like him. Uh, on the defensive line, you have Jerry Hughes, who, is he good? Is he not? He's played so well sometimes, but other times he's, like, pretty trash. I like Jerry Hughes. Big Jerry Hughes fan. Um, however, we're probably going to have to trade him. He is almost 30 years old. He's not going to develop any more than this. Marcel Darius, another player I'm probably going to have to trade. Kyle Williams, definitely want to trade him as he is super old. Shaq Lawson, hopefully he can develop. This is actually a very interesting player. Eddie Yarbrough out of Wyoming has a ton of potential in my opinion. He could be really good for us in here. With the cornerbacks, EJ Gaines has played really well. Tredavious White could be the best nickel cornerback in the NFL in a couple years' time. Sharice Wright is a disaster. And Ramon Humber. 30. Can't do it. But there's potential on this team. This could be a really good team. Cedric Thornton they have too. Like, this has potential. Just got to figure out what I want to do with Shady, what I want to do with Tyrod. I think I might want to turn a lot of these players into picks. Tyrod Taylor is not the long-term solution at quarterback for this Bills team, at least not for the purposes of this rebuild. He's not. With my first trade, I'm trading the ancient Lorenzo Alexander Again, same could be said for Kyle Williams and Cedric Thornton. For Demarcus Lawrence from the Cowboys, who's played very, very, very well this season, the former Boise State outside linebacker, now defensive end for the Dallas Cowboys, has just torn it up, and he's going to be a great staple on our defensive line for hopefully years to come. Jerry Hughes has got to go next. I can't be having 29-year-olds on this team for the future. That's the same reason why Tyrod Taylor's not the future. I think he's actually probably a top-10 quarterback in the league. People would disagree with me on that, but, like, he has the passer rating. Um, like, Tyrod Taylor is a very underrated player. But for the purposes of this rebuild, I got to get rid of him. Same thing with Shady. 29, like, I can't have him. 
With this trade, I'm trading Jerry Hughes, just getting a little bit younger and a little better on the defensive line. Also a third round pick this year and a fourth round pick next year for Cam Jordan from the New Orleans Saints. He is, I believe, 26, 28, 27. I was going to count up. It was going to be a thing, whatever. He's decently young, but the reason that I would feel comfortable trading for someone who's a year younger than Jerry Hughes, he's not going to re regress this year. And when he does end up regressing, it's going to be like to a 94 probably over the course of a couple years. And I might even slide him in to play defensive tackle where I think he'd be a more natural fit in our system. He's an absolute beast. Very happy to add him. Now I just got to trade a couple more players. I don't even know what I really want to do. I'm just kind of messing around. I like a lot of the players on this team. I, I find it I find it difficult to want to trade a lot of them. Vladimir Dukas, a second-round pick, and Eddie Yarbrough for Grady Jarrett from the Atlanta Falcons. I'm not really in love with giving up this second-round pick, but I figure I can just trade players uh, and get more picks back. I'm trying to just, I guess, really solidify this defensive line, and I think that's going to be... I think I'm going to hold on to Marcel Darius. I really do. So it's pretty much just deciding who else plays where. And I, th I think I'm going to kick inside Cam Jordan. So maybe that means Marcel Darius doesn't stay on the team. Because I want Demarcus Lawrence to play on the edge. I want Shaq Lawson to play on the edge. Right end, we're fine. Defensive tackle. I need to get rid of one of these guys. I think Grady Jarrett has more potential. I think he's younger. I think he's arguably better right now than Marcel Darius, which means I'm going to trade uh, Marcel Darius. It's going to be controversial. With this trade, I'm trading Marcel Darius and Matt Milano for a first-round pick from the Giants. If it goes anything like how it has in real life, it's going to be a top-five pick. So as much as a Giants fan, I hate to see the Giants struggle. Could be a very, very good pick, although I don't really think it will be. I think I'm just going to trade the rest of these players probably for picks. It's really hard to trade for players year one, or like at least a lot of players. So I think I'm just going to try and just get draft picks from shitty teams. Uh, who else does really bad? The Bengals always do really bad, uh, badly, I think. Bengals, Bucks. With this trade, I'm trading Richie Incognito, Ryan Gurley in a third next year for a first-round pick from the Buccaneers. Hopefully that pick is really good. With this trade, I'm trading Tyrod Taylor, Charles Clay, and a first-round pick next year for a first-round pick this year and a second-round pick this year from the San Francisco 49ers. I know I'm kind of stockpiling first-round picks, but I think it's the best way to rebuild teams in Madden um, through this fantasy style where we just do anything we want. If you guys want to see realistic rebuilds, that's in another playlist on my channel. I'll try to get one out this week, maybe even tomorrow by the time you're watching this. Uh, but I'd like to get some more mid-rounds. Not even mid-rounds, but still like top-tier picks, like second- and third-rounders. If I can do that, I'm going to be in great shape. Nate Peterman is our new starting quarterback. I got to trade Shady. I have to. Sorry. With this trade, I'm trading Cordy Glenn, Jordan Mills, and a second round pick next year for a one and a three from the New York Jets. I know I keep stockpiling these first round picks, but I really do think it's the best way to trade for players that I want and draft players that I'm going to want. So I have a ton of first round picks, the, probably the most I've ever had this year. Um, in one of these rebuilds so i know people are not gonna be a fan of that some people at least but i do think it's are you fucking okay i don't know if you guys could tell lights just went down on broadway um what do i want i want mid-rounders still haven't traded shady seeing the lights go out on broadway are the raiders the only team giants okay it's going to be LaShawn McCoy and a 4 for a 3. Now, I know this seems like a ridiculously bad trade, but it was the best option I had. And LaShawn McCoy is not going to be a long, my long-term running back. So I had to make the sacrifice, get him off the team for the sake of the betterment of the team over the long term. And I know that's going to be an unpopular opinion. It was just was something I thought needed to be done. So I've dismantled a lot of this team. I'm fully aware. I'm going to stick with the cornerbacks. I think they're good. I'm going to stick with the safeties. I think the secondary has a ton of potential. I have a ton of picks now. I think it's enough to work with. Clearly, I have like 28 first-round picks. That's clearly an exaggeration. But if we go ahead and do this, this is the team that we are going to work with. And it is quite poor. This is not going to be a good season one. I can promise you. It is not going to be a good season one. But I think down the line, season 
two, season three, potentially season four, I think we're going to be in a really, really good spot. So I will see you at the midseason mark. All right, here we go. Two and five at the midseason mark. Not doing all that well. Nate Peterman has a decent amount of XP. Nothing really all that crazy. Demarcus Lawrence is free agent. I forgot to change positions around. I knew I had forgotten something somewhat major. That's that's an issue. I'm also going to make Cam Jordan a defensive tackle. See what his overall goes up to. I imagine it will go up and not down. He goes up to a 97 overall. Still 28. I really think this is the best move for him. And this is actually what the team looks like in our nice little 4-3 here. It's a good-looking group of guys. Shaq Lawson's out there now. Tredavious White's getting a ton of XP. How? Quick development, but where are you getting all this XP from? I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just happy he has it. It's all good. Okay, so let's go ahead and sign back Demarcus Lawrence, a couple other free agents. I'm sure there are some guys in here that we're going to want in EJ Gaines, and that's kind of it. Don't really want Jordan Matthews all that much. All right, EJ Gaines, Demarcus Lawrence, both back. I'm going to deal with Jordan Matthews and Preston Brown at a later date. Really couldn't care to right now, so I'm not going to. I will see you guys at the playoffs. I think we're going to be money. No, I'm just kidding. We're not. <laughs> All right, so we clearly missed the playoffs. I'm actually fine with that. We went 4-12. and 12. That's going to be a top five pick. Easy. We have the Jets first runner, so that's another top five pick. Let's check out the stats, see how we did so poorly. Nathan Peterman could have done better. 3,000 yards, 16 touchdowns, 11 picks, rushing Taiwan Jones was their starting running back. 678 yards, 6 touchdowns. Mike Tolbert as a fullback playing running back. 10 TDs, not bad. Receiving. Andre Holmes, 2 touchdowns. Jordan Matthews, 863 yards, 3 touchdowns. Zay Jones had 6 TDs, though. He actually had a pretty good season. Offensive line could have been worse, I suppose. Preston Brown had a ton of tackles. 171. Tackles for loss, 20 from Cam Jordan. Oh, my. Quarterback sacks, 11 from Demarcus Lawrence, 8.5 from Cam Jordan, 7 from Shaq Lawson, 5.5 from Grady Jarrett. Interceptions, we have 3 from Micah Hyde, 2 from Deion Lacey, EJ Gaines, as well as Jordan Poyer. Force fumbles, 2 from Demarcus Lawrence. Fumble recoveries is 1 from a handful of players. Any defensive touchdowns? No. I don't think we want anything. We were dead last in the league for offensive yards. I doubt we're going to see. What team am I? Where are the Bills? AFC, off the play, Offensive Player of the Year goes to Tom Brady. No Bills. Defensive Player of the Year, Dante Hightower. Is there Preston Brown in here? No. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Leonard Fournette, who is a 96 overall. I got to start trading for this guy. I keep forgetting. Nathan Peterman at number five. Zay Jones at number seven. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Markel Lee. Second time I've seen that uh, in back-to-back -back rebuilds. Tanner Vallejo at five. Deion Lacey at six. Tredavious White at eight. Totally forgot about him. As you saw there, 32nd in offensive yards. We're not going to worry about it right now. We're just going to go ahead and simulate to the offseason. Start to build this team back up from the dust. And by dust, I mean draft picks. You know, Jordan Matthews, I think, at the very least, is a good four. He's decent. He can definitely be better than that. He's our best option at wide receiver right now. And if I draft a rookie quarterback, we're going to need one playmaker, so I am actually going to go after him. Preston Brown has quick development. Did he always have quick? I was not aware of this. Okay, Preston Brown, you just went from maybe be resigned to absolutely be resigned. So Preston Brown's back. Jordan Matthews declined, so what I'm going to do here, it's going to be somewhat controversial, but I'll explain my decision. I'm going to franchise tag him for $12 million. There are going to be no good receivers. There are going to be no good free agents. I don't really need the money this year. The salary cap hit isn't bothering me at all. At all. So we're good. We only have 17 mil in free agency, but you can see the free agents. It's going to be Drew Brees probably. Oh, he's not even here. Larry Fitz is, though. You know, a bunch of players I really am not interested in at all. So we're fine. 12 million. I'm not even worried about it. And um, we're just going to go ahead, advance to the next week, do some scouting. And next time I see you guys, it's going to be for the draft. We're going to reassess Jordan Matthews next year. All right, here we go. We're in the NFL draft almost, actually. And there's a very interesting development. In fact, we have the second overall pick as well as the fourth and a handful of other picks, eighth, twelfth. This draft is unlike any I've ever seen before in a number of ways. 
I would say the most notable being the mid-round talent is so phenomenal. It would be foolish of me not to trade back to draft those specific players. So I'm going to do a whole lot of trading, da uh, trading back in this draft. A lot of it. However, I'm going to trade down the second overall pick with the Browns for their first rounder this year. First rounder next year. And their second rounder this year. Cowboys offered me the same deal. I think the Browns are a little bit worse than the Cowboys are. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Browns take two picks in a row. They take one player I was really heavily considering at number two. So I'm going to have to go a different direction. Let's take this absolute monster of a cornerback. Six foot four, four three five speed, 40.4 inch vertical jump. This is not even a human at this point. B press, B minus man, B minus zone. Incredible player. He's ranked three in the draft. Superstar development even. Unreal. 97 speed. What a player. But I'm going to go ahead and trade this pick down. I'm picking up a second and a fourth from the Bengals, as well as a, a first next year. So, easy trade for me. And we're going to simulate to our next pick. And I think I'm actually going to take that pick. Our first pick was an overwhelming success. Hopefully our next one will be as well. I'm going to take Torrey Cash, a running back out of Oklahoma. Who's the last great running back out of Oklahoma you can think of? And I mean really great. Yes, you guessed it. One of the most talented running backs in NFL history. Debatably a top 10 college player in NFL history. I would say the best player never to win the Heisman. A lot of bias coming out here. Because Adrian Peterson is my favorite player of all time. But hint, it's Adrian Peterson. Is Torrey Cash the next Adrian Peterson? Quick answer, no. They don't even compare in any way. Adrian Peterson, 6'1", 217, and it's just a power back with insane athleticism. Torrey Cash, kind of like a scat back. Hopefully he's a beast, great top three skills, insanely fast and quick. Here he is. Ranked number 13 in the draft. He has superstar development, 78 overall. I wonder if you guys can see this on the screen. You see half his face. This is why I think the bottom left is the best place. Uh, but you guys tell me. Rank number 13 in the draft, we took him at number 8. 95 speed, really, really fast. I think a pretty good player. So we are 2 for 2 on superstars. No complaints. Now I'm going to gamble on my quarterback of the future. Good top 3 skills, nothing, uh, excuse me, nothing insane. Did I just get a German accent real quick? Nothing insane? No. All right, we're going to calm down. He's very well balanced in terms of a combine. He's an athletic player. Hopefully he's pretty good. I know his type's balanced. I didn't even see that. Here he is. He's going to be a 77 overall. It, yeah, it's a reach. Uh, that doesn't mean he doesn't have potential, though. He has good enough throw power, good enough speed to get it done. His accuracies are not bad. It's just deep accuracy needs to improve. I was hoping for some kind of a development trait. He didn't really look all that good. But you figure, you know, you got to risk it for the biscuit. I risked it, and it didn't really work out as well as I would have liked. With this pick, though, I'm going to address the offensive line in Wes Lambert, an offensive lineman out of Ohio State. Fantastic top three skills, an amazing combine. Really quick, super strong, and fast. Here we go, Wes Lambert. He is a 79 overall, quick development as well. Ranked number 15, we took him at 17. 87 strength, 84 pass block, 83, excuse me, 84 run block, 83 pass block, 89 impact blocking. 83 excel pretty fast with 72 speed i think another pretty quality pick and i'm going to trade this pick down hopefully for a first rounder next year and a mid rounder if i can get it and the seahawks are going to offer just that so i'm going to accept that pretty much focusing on upgrading my entire offensive line through the draft which i usually never do but it's going to be in the way of curtis schmidt a right tackle out of texas hook him horns let's go baby curtis schmidt Good top three skills. Hope he's going to be a fantastic player, and he is pretty decent. Ranked number 30 in the draft, we took him at 37, 85 strength, 84 run block, 76 pass block, 86 impact blocking. I think he's a pretty solid right tackle. Again, you're hoping for a better development trait than normal, but normal isn't bad. It's better than slow, of course. Good attributes, I'm fine. I think decent second round pick. He can probably come in and start right away, and we'll see if he can develop over a year. If not, we'll probably just end up trading him, just like I'm trading this pick. Um, no offers for firsts next year, so I'll just take mid-round draft picks. There you go, Saints. Two threes and a four is what I picked up. With this pick, I am taking Benjamin Enderle out of Alabama. Is he 24? Yeah. 
Is he incredible though? Of course he is. A minus set power, B plus finesse move, B plus block shed. He's a sick pass rusher. I know we don't necessarily need that, but like you can't pass on this insane of a player at this range here in the third round. Just can't do it. So we're going to go ahead and draft him uh, in late second. Here he is. Who's the best in the game? Right here. 80 overall, superstar development. He's ranked number two in the draft. We took him at 56, 82 speed, 76 tackle, 86 block shot, 91 hit power, 86 finesse move, 85 power move, 83 pursuit. What an absolute stud. And he doesn't even fit the scheme. He's probably a way higher overall. What a draft pick. I'm, I'm fine with taking him when he's supposed to go in the third. I have so many third round picks, but I'm just not going to wait around. I'm going to take Andre Swanson. A middle linebacker out of Colorado, A minus set power, B plus tackle, B block shed. Look at the combine. Insanely fast, quick, athletic, strong. He has it all. Andre Swanson, 79 overall. He's ranked number five in the draft. We took him at 66. What kind of a draft is this? Quick development as well. This is insane. 87 speed, 87 tackle, 85 block shed, 91 hit power, 79 pursuit. Quick development, as I mentioned. What just an absolutely disgustingly insane player. Next pick, I'm going Bryant Miles to continue the trend of the best draft class of all time, which that might be this video title. B catching traffic, B catching, B spec catch. Fantastic top three skills, not to mention his combine. He's really fast, really athletic, as are all the players we're drafting so far. He's strong enough. Bryant Miles, ranked number eight in the draft. We took him at 68. I told you the mid range. The mid-rounds are where it's at, dude. 6'6", 22 years old out of UCLA. Quick development. Absolutely insane player. Like, I saw these guys, and I'm like, I have to get rid of the first-round picks, get mid-rounds, draft these studs. Had to. Okay, so we ha we've we had back-to-back-to-back-to-back. To back to back to back. Sick picks. Ring any bells, Buffalo Bills fans? We're going for another one, though. Daniel Chase. Crazy top three skills. His combine was shitty, but his top three skills are so good, I can't not go after him. He's an FAU owl. Kind of looks like an owl. Not really, but uh, to stretch. A minus impact block, B plus run block, C plus pass block. Really good top three skills, especially at this range. He's supposed to go late in the fifth round. We're going to take him in the third. Daniel Chase, 72 overall. He's ranked number 93. We take him at 82. But he's got 86 run block, 90 impact blocking. Could be a day one starter. I don't know. Let's go ahead and trade these picks down for seconds next year if I can get them. Saints, there we go. Colts, there we go. So it was obviously taking players like a couple rounds before they were supposed to go. I still have some players I'd like to get though. First up, we're going Asher Buchanan. Looks very similar to the last player we drafted. Hopefully he's around the same. And he is. Number 84, we took him at 111. 76 strength, 82 run block, 76 pass block. Again, insane impact blocking at a 90. Decent player, nothing special. But, it, like, this draft class has been absolutely insane. Next up is going to be Lynn Sensabaugh out of Notre Dame. Good top three skills. I think he's a good value pick. Another 72 overall, ranked 83 in the draft. We took him at 121. Good player, adding a lot of good rookies and good depth to our team. Three more picks. Here's my first one. Cameron McMillan, supposed to go early sixth. We're going to take him in the fifth. And he is a 75 overall. He's ranked number 36 in the draft. We took him at 132. 80 strength, 83 run block, 76, uh, 77 pass block, 86 impact blocking. Another crazy player at this range. Like, it's unreal, this draft class. This is probably my best one ever, if I'm being honest. Next up, I'm going Dante Hansen out of Southern Miss. I think it's another good value pick in the, in the sixth round. Here he is, 72 overall, ranked 97. We took him at 164 out of Southern Miss. And I have one more pick to go. And I think we're going to make make you guys proud. He's not insane. He's supposed to go undrafted. We're going to make his dreams and draft him. Duncan Stimson, another outside linebacker. Here he is. And he is, it says good pick. It's kind of a reach. He's 69 overall, so it's a good note to end it on. All right, here is the draft class. It is just absolutely wild. Let's count the guys who are 77 overall or above. It will even make it. As, well, 77. Let's. I don't know. You guys. You guys can see, like, 77. That's two. That's three, 
four, five, six, seven. Seven players who are 77 overall or above. We got a 76 in there. A multitude of 72s, a 75. So many good outside linebackers we brought in. We drafted a lot of linebackers. Tons of good development traits. This was just a fantastic draft overall. I'm just going to cut John Miller. I don't need him. We're going to start some of our rookies. Just get them in there. All right, so this is the team we're going to be fielding. And it is pretty good. A lot of rookies playing. Swanson, I moved to outside linebacker. His overall went up a couple. I uh, haven't upgraded anybody yet, but I'm going to. Lowry is going to probably play nickel corner, I guess, his first year offense. We are starting an entire rookie offensive line, rookie tight end. we got a rookie running back, a rookie quarterback. Wide receivers are not rookies, though. Not a really great receiving core, to be fair. Defense is looking solid. I could use, let me sign a running back, actually be a cornerback out of free agency. But, like, what a, what a great draft for us. Pretty good undrafted rookie. I went after some undrafted rookie uh, cornerbacks as well. Like, there are some good ones that you can find, and we need depth, so we might as well just go after the best overall players. And there are some sick ones. All right, this is the team, though, before we officially start the first season. Hope things go well, although it's very possible that they don't. That is, that's always a big possibility. Hopefully, the players that we need to make plays make plays. That's what it comes down to. I will see you guys at the midseason mark. So at the midseason mark, Jets are 0 and 8. We are 3 and 4. Not exactly where I'd like to be, but it's where we are. Can't really do much about that. Uh, free agents that are notable. Nathan Peterman is close to our rookie quarterback in terms of overall. They're not developing the way I would have liked. Grady Jarrett is there. Who else? Who else? Jordan Matthews. Oh, I got to deal with him again. Do I really want him? Uh, I don't know. Grady Jarrett, I definitely want back, for sure. And he's back. Jordan Matthews is another, like, figure it out at a later date type of deal. Would you guys say there are a few first round caliber receivers? Jesus. All right, quickly approaching week 17. And I'm not sure that we're going to make the playoffs. I'm pretty sure we're not. And we don't. 5-11. and 11. It's improvement, although I didn't really want it to be. I just I expected us to draft a better quarterback. And he may have actually won Rookie of the Year. Let's check out the stats, see how everyone did. Lewis Bryant, 3,500 yards, 20 touchdowns, 15 picks is not great. Rookie Torrey Cash, under 1,000 yards, 8 touchdowns. Elijah Hood had 9. Real touchdown vulture. Andre Holmes led our team in catches by one. Touchdowns was Jordan Matthews by one, who also had over 1,000 receiving yards. Zay Jones performed pretty well. Rookie Bryant Miles was okay. Blocking, not a ton of sacks allowed, to be fair. Preston Brown led our team in tackles with 118. Tackles for loss, 8 from Andre Swanson. Quarterback sacks, 9.5 from Shaq Lawson. 9 from Demarcus Lawrence. 7 from rookie Benjamin Enderly. 6 from Cam Jordan. It was a really interesting set of stats. I mean, I don't think anyone on our team even performed that well. Four forced fumbles for Tredavious White is insane, who also had three recoveries. EJ Gaines had two. Any defensive touchdowns? No. Let's check out awards. We were 32nd in the NFL again in offensive yards. Tom Brady uh, won MVP of the 14 and two Patriots. Any Bills in here? No. Leonard Fournette already 99 overall. Okay. <laughs> Tom Brady won AFC Office Player of the Year. No Bills. Defensive player of the year goes to Ryan Shazier. No bills. Offensive rookie of the year, Lewis Bryant. I'll take it. Torrey Cash at number two. Bryant Miles at number nine. Defensive rookie of the year, Benjamin Enderly with Andre Swanson in second. Lynn Sensiball in third. Zach Lowry in fifth. That's weird because, like, I don't know. It just is. So we actually should have a decent amount of XP for a lot of these players. 29K. For rookie quarterback, Lewis Bryant, who does not get an increase to development despite winning Offensive Rookie of the Year. What about defensively? 64K for Benjamin Enderly, who already had Superstar, made the Pro Bowl. Preston Brown stays with Quick. What about Swanson? He already had Quick. Um, but you now he's a decent amount of XP. So does Zach Lowry. We should be able to upgrade this team a little bit, and we still have draft picks. We still have free agents. We have a ton of cap room. We are in such a good position for season three and four. It's not even funny. Uh, I'm done with Jordan Matthews. No interest. Vic Beasley Jr. is a free agent. That's interesting. 
Devontae Parker, yes, that is exactly who I needed. Long-term deal, Devontae Parker. Yes, please. Ali Marpet is here. He's a player I do not want to miss on, actually. See, that's what I'm talking about. Shady's already down to an 82 overall. He just wasn't the way, unfortunately. Vic Beasley, as much as I want him, there's no reason to. So I'm not going to go after him at all. Ali Marpet accepted. Devontae Parker accepted. So the wide receiving core just got significantly better with Devontae Parker. The offensive line, I mean, no one really got that much XP, unfortunately. But we're going to see who plays where. It's interesting. I think I might rock with them for another season, actually. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. All right, so we have the fourth overall pick in the draft. I'm just going to simulate to that. No one I wanted was drafted, so we're in the clear for that. We also have the 15th pick. We have the 19th pick. We have the 30, nope, 40. Do I have a second round pick? Oh, I have two back-to-back. -back. All right, let's see who's on the board. I'm taking Darren Fincher out of Bama. Great top three skills, and he is fast. 4, 2, 8, 40. Welcome to the team, Darren Fincher. 83 overall, quick development. He is ranked number one. We took him at number four, 97 speed, 86 route running, 75 catching, 95 excel, 82 catching traffic, 86 spec catch, 85 jumping. I almost took another player over him. There was, let me show you the draft board. A wide receiver. I almost took Gillisley. I almost took McClendon. And I'm like, you know what? I got a feeling about Darren Fincher. We went with him, and he's the best player in the draft. What is my drafting ability? It is insane. Off the charts. With this pick, I'm going another wide receiver. It's oh no, Harrison. Because when defenses see him, they go, oh no. Ran a 4 2 4 40. The second fastest in NFL history. One behind uh, John Brown and tied with Chris Johnson. When I said one, I don't mean like one one hundredth of a second. It's two one hundredth of a second. I mean one spot. It's tied with Chris Johnson for the number two spot. Pretty good top three skills. Again, so fast. Here he is. Slow development. No. It's 97 speed. He's decent. He's 77 overall. A oh, little bit disappointing. It's like when I, when I draft him, I say, oh, no, because he's... It's not as good as I thought he was going to be. Here we go. Melvin Reed. Different type of a player. Not that fast. 6'1". Great top three skills. Jump ball receiver. Incredibly strong. 80 overall. That's what I'm talking about. Number six in the entire draft. We took him at 19. Insane at going up and catching the football. 80 overall. That's why I don't need Jordan Matthews. This is the wide receiver draft. They've drafted three in the first round. The storyline implications of drafting a Marshawn, who is a power back, is almost too much for me to handle. I don't think I can do it. No, nah, I was wrong. I have to. Beast mode V2. Number 23 in the entire draft. Only 73 trucking. He's actually really good. We drafted him at 52 again. He's ranked number 23. Drafting a power back named Marshawn, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't not. I had to. Nate Peterman, my second round pick this year. And Deion Dawkins is going to get as far as lamp. 93 overall. The Western Kentucky Hilltoppers making another appearance in one of my rebuilds. And we're also picking up a first and a second next year from the Chargers. Kind of fleecing them a bit there. So I think our offensive line is really coming together. Now that we have Forrest Lamp. Now that we have Ali Marpet. Now that we have some of those rookies. I think we're in a really good position. And it's just kind of like, what else do we need? Defensive line is set. I don't think we need defensive line at all. I think the linebackers are also set. I think they're very, very good as for our 4-3. I could use cornerback depth, but I don't really think I need it. It's kind of coming down to like, I don't, I don't even know at this point. I think I'm just gonna like, I'm gonna trade down for picks. Oh my goodness, a five, a six, and a seven gets me a three and a four next year from the Chargers. Okay, like I will do that any day of the week. That's like, that's not even fair. Here in the fourth round, I'm actually taking a fullback. Now we Powell out of Notre Dame. He looks kind of sick, so figured I would take him. Insanely strong. Here he is. He's ranked number two in the draft. 84 overall. I'm not too excited about it because it's a fullback, but we got the number one and number two player. So that's something. Not that fast, but insane impact blocking, run blocking, trucking. Really, really solid player. One of the best fullbacks in the league already. And those are all of our picks. Let's go ahead and start season three. I have really high hopes. All right, so let's go ahead and figure out who's playing what position, who's playing where, and um, how much... This XP is going to help upgrade these players. I'm super, super pumped for this. This could be a sick team.
64k. I totally forgot about that. That's a lot of XP. All right, so this is the team. Some pretty big upgrades, I think, across the board. Bryant Miles is up to an 85. Offensive line pretty much stays the same. I move Lambert to left guard, Forrest Lamp to left tackle. Marpet's going to stay at center. Bryant is up to an 81. We got Tory Cash up to an 82. Bunch of new receivers. The entire receiving core uh, that starts is new. Defensively, Enderly is up to a 90 overall. Uh, Preston Brown's up to an 84. We have Swanson up to an 85. The safeties are kind of weird, I gotta be honest. Like, Micah Hyde, uh, I think he's, is he starting to regress? He is. That's unfortunate. Jordan Poirier looks like he better be a cornerback than a safety. 87 speed, 90 zone, 86 man. It's really, really odd. Let me see what his overall would be at cornerback. He'd be an 83 overall corner. I think it's because press is low. If I can trade Jordan Poyer for a good safety before we start, I'm going to do that because I just don't, for any safeties, honestly, I don't really see Jordan Poyer or Micah Hyde really developing if they haven't after these couple of years at all. All right, that is my new starting free safety. Oh no, Harrison, who we drafted this year. Jordan Poyer, who I just don't see developing as our free safety, and a third for the Honey Badger. 88 overall free safety, Tyre Matthew. He's going to come in and start, obviously, immediately. He is so sick. Love Tyron Matthew. And if I could trade Micah Hyde for a different safety, I would be over the moon. Oh my goodness. Cameron McMillan. And I'll trade. Let's go. Let's go a six and a seven for Joel Batonio. Let's go. That's a very good offensive lineman added to our team. Those are so easy to trade for sometimes. And now if I add Jordan Poyer back, or excuse me, Micah Hyde, Jordan Poyer is off the team. Uh, I can probably get rid of Colton Schmidt, who I don't need. He's going to have some value, though. We'll see if, if we can do anything else. I need a better free safety or strong safety. doesn't really matter. Any safety. I would gladly take a Harrison Smith. Oh, my goodness. I can get Harrison Smith fairly easily. Harrison Smith also would be a pretty good strong safety. Fit in pretty well. Micah Hyde. Colton Cameron. Doesn't matter. He's irrelevant. Colton. Something Schmidt. Who gives a Schmidt? Huh. Fourth round pick. For Harrison Smith, that gets it done. He's going to come in and play strong safety. I had to rearrange these positions so they actually make sense for us. We have a lot of players like Swanson is listed at right outside linebacker. He's playing left. I'm going to change everything around just so it fits a little bit better. Looks a bit nicer. All right, this is the team. Joe Patoni is going to play right tackle. Lambert at left guard. Marpet center. Chase is our starting right guard. We got a bunch of rookies playing all over the field. Bunch of drafted players, young players. Bunch of really good players, though, I think, overall. Shaq Lawson needs to start stepping his game up. Lowry's up to an 85. We're in a good spot. We just need to take our pretty good players and make them great players. Let's simulate to the midseason mark. So we're 5-3 and three at the midseason mark. I would say notably better. Shaq Lawson's a free agent. How much XP does he have? 4K? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign him back. Let's get Shaq Lawson back. We have the money. We can always trade for somebody better. Let's get Shaq Lawson back on the team. All right, Shaq Lawson, welcome back, buddy. You're the only player that I'm going to resign. I'm going to save this coach XP so I can use it to upgrade quarterback later. If we make the playoffs, we're going to have even more coach XP. So I really need to make the playoffs. So we ended up going 11-5. and five. We got the wild card spot. We got enough XP. That, that's crazy. We didn't, uh, didn't, well, I mean, we won the division, but it's crazy we didn't get a first round bye. I'm going to go ahead and turn on QB training boost. 1,600, I can get that on the D-line. Or excuse me, the O-line. I'm going to do that because I need them to be a little bit better than they are. Let's go ahead and check out the stats, see how we got to this position of 11-5 and five in year number three. Bryant threw for 4,280 yards, 32 touchdowns, 17 picks, more than one a game. That's not good. Torrey Cash, over 1,000 yards, 8 touchdowns. Marshawn Buchanan is a rookie, 10 TDs. Uh, we need a better run blocking O-line. I don't know. Devontae Parker, over 1,000 yards, 8 touchdowns. Darren Fincher, or Deron Fincher, uh, 81 catches, 727 yards, 5 touchdowns. But look at Melvin Reed, the rookie out of pit. Quick development already. I don't know if we drafted him with that or if he won something and got it. Pro Bowl appearance, get some quick development. I'll take it. 1,125 yards and 79 catches for 14 TDs. Great stuff from him. Sacks allowed, like, barely any. Defensively, Preston Brown led our team, 128 tackles, tackles for loss, 15 from Cam Jordan, 10 from Shaq Lawson, QB sacks, 15 from Demarcus Lawrence, 10 from Shaq Lawson, 8.5 from Cam Jordan up the middle, interception, 6 from Harrison Smith, 4 from Trey White, 3 from EJ Gaines, and Zach Lowry. Force fumbles, 
Two for Tredavious White and Dante Hansen. Fumble recoveries, we have one for a number of players. Tredavious, Tredavious White also had a touchdown. So did Harrison Smith. So did Tyra Matthew. What a group of playmaking uh, players in the secondary, especially the LSU boys. Tredavious White and Tyra Matthew. Le'Veon Bell takes home MVP. Leonard Fournette at number two. Devontae Freeman at four. A lot of running backs. Look at Ty Gurley. Surprised we don't see any Bills in here, to be honest. AFC Office Player of the Year, any Bills? No. Off Defense Player of the Year goes to Ryan Shazier. Demarcus Lawrence at 10. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Hudson Leonard. Melvin Reed at 4. That should be number 1, man. Marshawn Buchanan at 6. Dar or, excuse me, Deron Fincher at 9. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Curry Simmons. Any Bills? No. But I'm going to go ahead and upgrade these players. We have a decent amount of XP. Look at Reed, 51K. He's going to be an absolute beast. That was a great draft pick. 43K for Lambert. That's a Pro Bowl appearance. Got to be. It is defensively. Anyone has it a lot? 40K for Tredavious White. I'd say that's probably a decent bit. This is the team for the playoffs. A bunch of really, really huge upgrades. Look at Reed. Look at Fincher. A bunch of really, really huge upgrades, especially in the offensive line as well. Defensively. Um, decent upgrades across the board. Also, Tredavious White's up to a 92. This is a decent team. Well, let's see what overall we are. I'm curious. I would say 89, maybe. We're an 88, which probably will go up. Uh, if we can manage to beat the Patriots, probably be like an 89 or a 90. Here we go, though. Can we advance the divisional against a 9 and 7 Patriots? Can we beat them? We don't. They eliminate us. Okay. See you in the offseason. Who's in free agency? I have 46 mil to spend. Show me a position of need. Jalen Ramsey. Okay. I will not lie. A lot of tempting a lot of tempting things here. Keanu Neal, certainly tempting. I'm going to do it. Please show me Jalen Ramsey. Please show me Keanu Neal. We got Jalen Ramsey. Keanu Neal rejected? Interesting. Jalen Ramsey is a huge addition to our team. 99 overall. Tredavious White? No, he's not playing with confidence. Lowry, I mean, our four cornerbacks are tremendous now. Cam Jordan hasn't really gone down at all. Like, he's regressed slightly. He's 31, but he's still very good. Defense looks fantastic. Offensively, I think we're getting better, but I kind of went with the uh, just draft my entire team in this rebuild over, uh, like, trade for already established players. Running back hasn't really developed the way I'd like. Neither did quarterback. I'm just going to simulate to the draft and probably try to make some draft trades. I don't know if I'm going to trade for a quarterback. I don't know if I'm going to trade for a running back. Maybe I'll see if I can snag four net. But our draft picks are going to have more value in the draft. We'll see who we can snag. All right, a one and a three, as well as a four, gets me Leonard four net of the Jacksonville Jaguars. 99 overall running back. Had to Had to do it. Had to do it. Now I can trade Tory Cash, keep Marshawn on the team, and go after a better defensive lineman because Shaq Lawson is just not developing the way I wanted. And if you look at quarterback, Lewis Bryan, like, sure he won Offensive Rookie of the Year, but he's been abysmal, dude. Like, he's still only an 83 overall. I traded for my franchise quarterback. It's famous Jameis Winston. Tory Cash, a 1 and a 2, gets it done. You know, it's an interesting trade. I felt like I needed to address quarterback. Lewis Bryant just was not progressing enough. We're taking a little bit of a, of a jump to Jameis Winston, and I think he's going to help us win the Super Bowl here in the final season. Jonathan Allen, 94 overall. I will gladly take you. Does this work? Comes very close to work. I'm actually, I might not be able to do this. No, okay. What do I do to make this go through? I'm going to do a 5, a 1, and a 2 next year for a 2 this year from the Redskins. And now I'm going to try to trade them their two back using two twos and Lewis Bryant, our quarterback, for Jonathan Allen to play on the offensive line. It should be the defensive line. And that does end up going through the pick glitch, but that's a second-round pick up the top. A two, and then our quarterback, Bryant, for Jonathan Allen. There we go. This is a good team now. Let's go to the end of the draft. I know I took some shortcuts, um, but like just the way these fantasy rebuilds go, I'm going to do a realistic rebuild tomorrow. But, uh, yeah, hit me up on Twitter for who I should do. Twitter.com slash Bengal Designs. All right, here we go. I know a bunch of new faces on the team. Leonard Fournette, Jameis Winston. The guys I drafted, like, they looked awesome at the time. They just didn't quite develop, and there's nothing I can do about that. They're not performing. 
We could upgrade on the offensive line at right guard, but we're just going to rock with that. Defensively, I think we're pretty solid overall. Nothing crazy, but I still think a pretty good team. I'm going to let the CPU handle the upgrades. I'm going to simulate straight to the midseason mark, see how we are doing. Ooh, Leonard Fournette's a free. Actually, I don't even have to worry about it. This is the final season. we got to win now. What am I doing? Okay. How's the team? How's the XP situation? Mm, decent amount of XP. What's our record, more importantly? 6-2. and two. All right, we should have a clear shot at the playoffs, uh, although I am going to upgrade now to be on the safe side of things. I don't want to be be stuck without upgrading and, you know, we miss out on the playoffs somehow. Coach XP, I can probably spend that on... I was going to do defense. Let's do the defensive line. No, let's do... Let's do the D-backs, and then I'm going to upgrade one... Or excuse me, up... Uh, no, I'm going to simulate one week, hopefully get some more Coach XP, and then uh, upgrade a little bit again. We didn't get any because we had a bye week. What am I talking about? Here we go, though. Can we just win or hit a coach goal? I need to get 1,800. We lost. Okay, that's no good. That's no good. Show me 7 and 3. There we go. Okay, we got the XP. Somebody regressed. Fuck them. Let's go ahead and spend that coach XP. And then, actually, you know what? I'm going to risk it for the biscuit. I'm going to upload. Upload. I'm going to upgrade at the end of the season. No, I'm not. All right, here we go. Show me the team after the upgrade points. Nothing insane. Fincher's up to an 89. Past Reed somehow. He's up to an 88. Powell's at an 89. Winston, 90. Miles at a 90. The entire O-line is looking just gross defensively. Uh, linebackers are looking really, really good. Enderly's up to a 94. Safeties are nice. Oh, my goodness. Tredavious White's at a 90. But look at Zach Lowry up to an 89. Defensive line is kind of sick. Here we go. This is a playoff caliber team. Don't know how deep we're going to go to the playoffs. Hopefully win the Super Bowl. But we'll find out here shortly. Here we go, 11 and 5. We got the wild card against the Broncos. 3,000 XP. Let's go ahead and check out the stats, see how we got in this position. Patriots went 13 and 3. Jameis Winston, what a season. 14 picks, I know, not great, but 4,653 yards, 42 touchdowns with those 14 picks. Oh my God, Leonard Fournette, what a season. Average 99.8 yards per game, didn't fumble, broke 46 tackles. 1,597 yards, 14 touchdowns, but he averaged 5.6 yards per carry. What is this? Leonard Fournette is absolutely gross in this game. Made his fourth Pro Bowl, running back of the year. Of course he was. 5.6 yards per carry. I've never seen anything like that. And then Jameis Winston's out here running for 5.5 yards per carry. What is going on? Melvin Reed led our team in receptions. 10 touchdowns, 952 yards. Fincher. 1,200 yards, 6 touchdowns. Devontae Parker, 1,000 yards, 14 touchdowns. Our tight end, Brian Miles, 799 yards and 7 touchdowns. This has got to be the top offense in the NFL, I would guess. Defensively, oh my god, Jonathan Allen. I just glanced at that. Tackles for loss, 17 from Cam Jordan. Look at quarterback sacks, though. 23.5 from Jonathan Allen. 16 from Demarcus Lawrence. Interceptions. 8 from Harrison Smith. 6 from Jalen Ramsey. This team is so good. At least, like, they're putting up crazy numbers. Any touchdowns? Defensively, no. They're putting up crazy numbers. Yeah, it's first offensive, um, or first ranked offense at the NFL, second ranked defense, yearly award. Show me an MVP. Aaron Rodgers gets it. Beats out Jameis Winston by one slot. How is Leonard Fournette not up there, though? AFC Offensive Player of the Year, Jameis Winston to Leonard Fournette, seven. Defense Player of the Year, J.J. Watt. Jonathan Allen, five. He should be one. Preston Brown, 9. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Frank Howard. Interesting. Quarterback. Defensive Rookie of the Year, James Green. No bills. All right, I'm going to use some of this XP that we have. No one really has a crazy amount. The most I can see is 16K or 18K from Lambert, actually. On the defense, though, no one really has that much, unfortunately. But we're going to use it all. All right, here we go. This is the team. It is looking so good. Our receiving core went from the worst in the NFL to the best in one season. Everyone, like, we have three receivers over 90. Leonard Fournette, we have Jameis Winston playing up to a 93. Starting tight ends a 92 overall. The offensive line is sick. The defense is just really, really good. Enderley's up to a 95 playing in his second year. Swanson is up to a 90. Just everyone is so good. Lowry's up to a 90. Tredavis White, 90. E.J. Gaines, 81. 
The defensive line is insane. If we lose to the Broncos here in the wild card, I'm going to be so heated. We advance, and now we have to face the Patriots in the divisional to get to the conference championship. I'm going to use some of this coach XP. I'm going to upgrade the team, and we're going to beat the Patriots. All right, here we go. Let's beat the Pats in the divisional. Advance to the conference championship. We do, and we face the Cleveland Browns. The 11-5 Cleveland Browns here in the 2020 Conference Championship at First Energy Stadium. I'm going to upgrade the team yet again. We have some XP. I'm not wasting any. Let me check what our overall is comparatively to the Browns. I'm actually pretty curious. We were in 95. They're in 88, which I like. I normally would like the look of, but I just, I've played too much Madden. I've simulated, well, okay, let me rephrase. I've simulated too much Madden to know how this ends. We've made it. We are in the Super Bowl to face the 11-4-1 Seattle Seahawks. I'm going to upgrade yet again. And um, I'm going to show you our overall. It's probably going to be maybe a 96. It all comes down to our special teams, I guess, because we probably do have 99 offense, 99 defense. So it's going to come down to that special teams rating, and I'm not even sure who we have currently signed as our kicker or puncher. I never worry about that stuff. And then we come out and we miss extra points. We miss, you know, punts maybe. We got Brett Kern and Henry O'Neill, a rookie out of Florida State. He looks decent despite being somehow whiter than I am. Um, here we go. Super Bowl Dallas. Bills, Seahawks. We're 95 still. They're 94. This is going to be a close game. The last time the Bills and Seahawks faced each other was Monday, November 7th of last year. The 4 and 5 Bills took a loss to the 5-2-1 Seattle Seahawks. They lost 25-31 to after the Bills had a first quarter lead. Seahawks score, outscored them 21-3 to in the second quarter. It was a scoreless third, and then the Bills outscored the Seahawks in the fourth 8-3, to but still ended up losing 31-25. to Hopefully, we can take vengeance here in the 2020 Super Bowl. All right, here we go in the Super Bowl. We are up 7 nothing. Just got to keep pouring it on. 14 nothing. Keep pouring it on. Don't let them score. Do not let them score. 21 nothing. This is a blowout. Seahawks do get on the board 21 to 3, but now 24 to 3. We get that 21 lead straight back, but the Seahawks are coming back. Oh my goodness, are they going to tie it up? No, they do not, and that is the final score 24 to 17 here in Super Bowl. 52, 53, I don't know when it is. But anyway, it was a 2020 season. You do the math. The Bills are Super Bowl champions. They make it, and believe it or not, they don't lose it four in a row. I know you all expected them to lose it. No, the Bills actually do end up winning the Super Bowl. And you know what? Good for the Bills. Good for the Bills Mafia. If it has to happen in a video game and not real life, that's how it happens. Let's see who the Super Bowl MVP is. Probably a wide receiver who caught one ball for six and a half yards. They don't mark it up as a half yard, but Leonard Fournette gets it. No, he actually has a sick game. 23 carries, 117 yards, and two touchdowns. Usually they'll give it to a receiver. Literally last Raiders, or here's a Colts rebuild I did. Amari Cooper had two catches for 12 yards, no touchdowns, one MVP. I don't know who's voting, but there you see. Devontae Parker hoists up. The Super Bowl trophy gives it to Preston Brown. You see Jameis Winston up there. You see um, Leonard Fournette up there. Look at the sideburns and the, that beautiful bald head. Anyway, thank you guys for watching the video, though. I hope you enjoyed. A lot of fun for me, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks again for watching. Take it easy.